Hey everyone, what's going on? Got a video tonight that sums up a little bit of what I've picked up lately. Did a card show in Minneapolis a couple weekends ago and was able to pick up quite a few vintage singles and also some newer stuff that I used to finish some sets and uh, I did a video on that last time. Um, some more came in and uh, I'm going to show those as well. So. The last video I did had uh, me talking about the 86-87 Fleer basketball set and that got me down to one card and just by chance I was able to snag the last card which is, it's actually great and I'm going to pop it out of it. The holder is in uh, number, number four, Danny Ainge. This popped up online and... Uh, Buy it now at $10, free shipping, and I couldn't pass it up, especially when it uh, was already slabbed and, and uh, no evidence of you know recoloring or anything, which is always a concern with 8687 Fleer. But so I grabbed that one, and now the base set, I guess, or the set is complete. I now need to pick up a few of the stickers, including the Jordan. I did have one at one time, but I got rid of it. It was uh, it was really rough, and uh, someone wanted it just to say they had a Jordan sticker, so um, I traded it off and with the intent anyway of replacing it one day, so now the search is on for one of those. But this one completes the, the base set, or the set for 8687 Fleer, so that was fun. Uh, I'm going to blame Baseball Collector a little bit here because he has got me into um, picking up some random graded cards that have no rhyme or reason other than the fact that I just like them. And I don't believe I showed three of these before, but I'll do that now. And um, as a product of the 80s growing up, um, you can't go wrong with Larry Legend and uh, one of the, the very first basketball set to ever put together was the 8990 Hoops and uh, love these cards and found one in a nine in a new holder for under 10 bucks and I had to have it. One of those impulse buys maybe I guess you could call it. And along with that, in that same set is the Jordan. And again in a 9. Uh, I want to say this one was 15. Give or take a little bit. And then any fan of, NB of the NBA in the 80s. And I'm not a fan of it right now. I cannot. I just don't like the brand of basketball it has. But uh, Sir Charles in the 89 Fleer. 89-90 Fleer with the old school Sixters jersey and logo. Just another great card just like the looks of it again no rhyme or reason so I picked those three up and then on the baseball side uh, late night shopping again you had to be careful with that sometimes but um, 86 tops Mike Schmidt in a PSA 8 and probably six bucks seven bucks somewhere in there just like picking up random graded uh, singles from the 80s now of players that I enjoyed watching grow up and uh, so I snagged the the Michael Jack Schmidt 86 tops in an 8 alright so on to some of the other recent pickups um, I'll actually stick with a basketball theme and, and I'm not a major collector of jersey cards, but uh, Pacific Crown uh, or Crown Royale this year has a really uh, cool set of, of jerseys and quite a few stars from the 80s in it. And I've picked up two so far. The first is Larry Legend, and the other one is The Doctor. And two players that uh, we idolized growing up and 
literally five to eight dollars a piece. I know that's probably expensive for a jersey card, but it's they were cool and and uh, had to have them. Had to have them for the collection. So let's go into the '80s basketball uh, collection, and then um, one random baseball pickup. Uh, being a Twins collector, you sometimes get not bored, but you get a little stagnant with what you find, and every once in a while you come across something that you think that just it's a really cool card, and it's got a, a signature on it that you really like, and a player that you watched growing up, and Tim Raines from Five Star. Um, I think this one was $12 shipped, or maybe even less than that, maybe it was 10 a uh, guy on one of the trading sites I, I'm on um, had a bunch of stuff, and, and uh, I just thought it was really cool. The old school Expos, Unis, and I thought he's a Hall of Famer. Hall of Fame model for uh, 10 bucks approximately. You can't go wrong. Um, favorite NFL football player is Adam Thielen. And just to share a little tidbit about this um, I started teaching in the year 2000 January 1st of 2000 and my first teaching job was in Detroit Lakes Minnesota and that is the hometown of Adam Thielen and I had to go back and do some looking but I am 100% positive that he was one of my students my first full year of teaching and Obviously, he wouldn't remember me from anywhere, and that's fine. I mean, that's not the point. But it's uh, kind of cool to say that you've had a uh, uh, an athlete that is regarded as one of the top receivers in the NFL that came from small town Minnesota. And um, so I pick up cards of his when I can. Um, I don't go crazy after autos or anything, just things that are affordable. And this one was... Um, really really reasonable uh, I end up snag it for about 12 bucks I think so pretty cool and then in a previous video I mentioned about uh, living in Fargo and how our college football team North Dakota State is every year in the hunt for the FCS national title and this year they won it again, so that's seven out of the last eight years. I know it's not a big deal to most people, and that's that's fine. Um, believe me when I say this, I don't believe that they could hang with um, Alabama or any of those, so um, don't grill me on that. But um, the quarterback, Easton Stick, they are saying he is starting to climb draft boards a little bit. And uh, the latest report I read was, he could go as high as the fifth round, which is still, I mean, it's outstanding in general. But to come from the FCS, um, you know, obviously Carson Wentz, who was a who went to North Dakota State, going number two overall, and before that Joe Flacco um, for the Ravens. Now he's moved on, but um, and also Kurt Warner uh, played in the FCS, was Division One AA at the time, but. Uh, this one, uh, being that he played for NDSU, um, I snagged and, and was uh, pretty thrilled to to grab that one. Um, the other thing that I will show is, I'm, I see this is getting to be nine minutes, is I picked up from my favorite card shop in Minneapolis, the uh, Twin City Sports Collectibles, um, the 50 cent bin that uh, I, I mentioned before um, I struck again and uh, this time he had it loaded with 63's and no creases some centering issues but for building a set at 50 cents a pop and then he always cuts you a little bit of a deal at the end is uh, as well worth it so um, I grabbed all the 63's that I could and um, said thank you because they were they're just in really nice shape um, for being that old and I know a lot of
card shops don't uh, won't sell stuff that cheap. Um, card shows, I mean, you're lucky to find them for a dollar a common. But uh, for building a set, this was uh, pretty cool. Bill Rigney, who was also the manager of the Twins. Um, there he is with the LA Angels. Okay, Bob Del Greco, um, Ed Lopat, Frank Torrey, Joe's brother. So just really cool um, to find these and, and to snag them just because of the significance that I'm, I'm attempting to build that set. And I know it's going to take a while, but um, Stan Williams, pitch for the Twins also. Um, but it was really fun. Cool uh, dual card of Casey Stengel and Gene Woodling. Pitching leaders, Camilo Pasquale, the Twins on there. So yeah, it uh, big power. Um, if you ever get a chance or you're in Minneapolis, uh, check out Twin City Sports Collectibles. Rob always treats you well and uh, it's a great time. So anyway, that's my latest and uh, hope everyone is having a good week and we'll talk at you later. Take care.